If you spot this bizarre looking creature on the beach, experts say you may want to stay away. You're happily taking a walk across a picturesque beach on a sun-soaked summer's day when you stumble across what looks like a jellyfish. But on closer inspection you realize that it's a lot more unusual than your average stinging sea creature. By this point, it's probably wise that you test your sand running skills. The creature's most distinctive feature is its uppermost polyp, a balloon-esque float which is typically either violet, pink or blue. This can extend to roughly half a foot above the water's surface. Down below, it has a number of polyps and tentacles which can extend to an astonishing 100 feet. This quirky-looking creature is largely found in subtropical and tropical seas. However, as they are propelled by ocean currents and winds, examples can often be spotted in places you might not expect. For instance, in October 2019 a number were reported to have been washed up on beaches across the English county of Hampshire. The animal is said to resemble a Portuguese warship from the 1700s under full sail, which explains the origin of its name. Indeed, the sea critter is known as the Portuguese Man o' War. And although the jellyfish-like creature looks like one single entity, it's actually a genetically identical colony. Yes, the Portuguese Man o' War is classed as a siphonophore. This is the word given to a group of individual zoods that are capable of replicating themselves hundreds and sometimes thousands of times over. These clones then strain together to form one large extended body. And they all have their part to play. Indeed, each and every one of the Portuguese Man o' War's four polyps serve a distinct purpose. These include feeding, floating, capturing prey and reproducing. However, the sea creature, which is also known as a blue bottle due to its prevailing color, isn't the most active when it comes to traveling. The colorful Portuguese man o' war, known for getting caught in seaweed mats, may be easy to spot in the ocean waters. But it is not quite as eye-catching once it washes up on shore. Indeed, it loses most of its red, blue or purple pigment once stranded. And if you're wondering how exactly the man o' war reproduces, wonder no more. The critter adopts the broadcast spawning method which involves several big groups. Here, both the male and female release their sperm and eggs, respectively, at the same time to help boost the chances of the latter being fertilized. The Portuguese man o' war might not be as well known as these sea critters. But it can cause just as many problems. Indeed, its tentacles, capable of extending up to 165 feet, are normally reserved for paralyzing their small fish prey. However, they can also be used to sting any human that happens to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. So what exactly happens if you're unlucky enough to be stung by one of these weird-looking creatures? Well, the man o' war's tentacles will leave your skin with an extended crimson temporary scar which can last for several hours. You should also expect swelling in the affected area and to feel a burning pain. Minnesota Health Organization Fairview also advises on how you can treat any man o' war injury in the immediate aftermath. Firstly, you should use salt water to rinse the affected area. If you happen to have any type of concentrated vinegar solution to hand, then you can also apply it to the wound. This solution will help to both make the stingers inactive and stop any more toxins from being released. You should then try and get rid of the tentacles with a gloved hand before bathing the area for another 20 minutes in salt water. And, of course, if the reaction is more severe then you should seek medical assistance immediately. Fairview also gives out tips to help further treat the man o' war sting when you get home. Once any tentacles have been removed, victims should place a nice pack over the affected area for at least 20 minutes. This step should be repeated every couple of hours over the first day. Over the next few days this ice pack procedure should be followed three to four times every day. If you haven't got an ice pack to hand, then simply seal a number of ice cubes in a plastic bag. Then use a thin and clean cloth or towel to wrap the bag up, as an ice pack should never be placed on the skin directly. Fairview also advises on how you can reduce the risk of getting stung by a Portuguese man o' war in the first place.
Swimmers are advised to check out any beach reports from the local area before taking a dip in the ocean. If the creatures do happen to be present, then you should refrain from going into the water. And just like the more common jellyfish, even if the creature happens to have died, it can still produce a dangerous sting. But how exactly do Portuguese man-o-wars deliver such a dangerous sting? Well, their tentacles contain microscopic capsules called nematocysts. And these are filled with coiled tubes that can unleash a deadly and paralyzing venom on crustaceans and small fish and cause a whole lot of pain for humans, too. Thankfully no one died during one of the most numerically large incidents involving the creatures in recent times. But it still left an astonishing number of people needing treatment from nearby lifeguards patrolling the beaches of Hollywood, Florida on a single day in 2018. Indeed, the South Florida Sun Sentinel newspaper reported that 204 individuals, mainly tourists, were stung. Two people who know all about how painful the man o' war sting can be are Blue Planet 2 cameraman Andrea Cassini and Rafa Herrero. The pair covered themselves from head to toe in Vaseline for protection while filming the critters for the TV documentary for three months in the Canary Islands. But they were still stung on the free hand they needed to operate the camera.